Hello. Hello, everyone. Starting press conference with G2. Um, I'm going to start with a question from Zne of Sportskida to Sarah. This was your first international event. How would you say was your experience getting to play against the top teams in the world on the big stage? Um, since it was my first, of course, I was uh, nervous going into every game, but playing was really fun. And when you're on stage, that's all we really think about, having fun. Okay, now we have a question from Sergio Fiorini of Correspondente Sportivo to Mimi. Uh, what do you think Team Liquid did that made the match more complicated today? Um, they learned from their mistakes on Lotus. It was probably our mistake to pick the same map that we won against them that hard, but you live in, uh, you learn. But um, yeah, they played their own game and not ours. Last time we played ours. Okay, now questions from press in the room. Uh, hello, uh, Igor Oliveira for Valorant Zone. Uh, in today's match, Liquid won a lot of clutches. Uh, do you guys think that the crowd buff had anything to do with it? Uh, to whoever wants to answer. What did, what did you say, crowd? The crowd buff. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so, but they were definitely loud and cheering for them. Um, for me personally, it's not that distracting, but of course it shouldn't influence the way we play, right? Like we still need to proper communicate with each other how to play the afterspan situation, so it's totally on us. Yeah, thanks. Someone else from the room? No? So we're going to have questions from press in Zoom. Pedro Romero from Blix. Hello. First off, um, tough luck on the loss. It's a pretty tough way to go down, uh, given that you guys were nearly, nearly uh, uh, reaching the grand finals once again. But still, it is what it is. Um, I got a question for Roxy and anyone else who, who would like to, to answer as well. Um, similar to, to previous questions in this press conference so far, um, what do you feel has been the biggest takeaways that, that, that yourself and also um uh, uh that you've had from your experience with G2 and, and competing and facing the other opponents, you know, what's been your biggest takeaway in that regard? Uh can, can you repeat that? I did not understand anything at all. Yeah, um what's the biggest takeaways that, that you've made from your experience competing in this land? Please repeat the question, please. Yes, biggest take, biggest takeaways, as in like takeaways, as in moments that you singled out to remember that you'll put into use for the future. You know, reflections, think things like that. Um, I mean, yeah, just overall, as Mimi said, I mean, Team Liquid did learn from their mistakes and they played their own game, and I feel like. Uh, we were like a little, a little bit too focused on their game a little bit as well, and I feel like we also didn't really learn from our mistakes from the last time we played. And I think the biggest takeaway is just really to not to dig too deep into how other teams are playing, but to focus on the stuff that we want to do. To focus on our mistakes and what went wrong last time on our on our side, and not what went right on their side, for example. Um, and just like, yeah, that's it basically. Okay, now Nicolas Rocha from Periodista Gamer. Thank you. Um, this is for Glance. I want to know, in general, how did you feel and leave these game changers compared to the previous one? Mm, when previous game changers felt felt a bit a bit easier for us but it was also my first LAN and this time I felt like it was some better preparation from other teams and from other regions we didn't really know how they play and um, we had a good run in the beginning and I felt that today for example we basically lost to ourselves and um, 
yeah last year it was easier and this year it was like more competition and difficult um i think both strat wise and mechanically wise thank you okay now facundo from fd news hi uh, well my question is for the coach uh, Mimi already said that uh, Team Liquid made you made the game go the way the Team Liquid want. Uh, do you think that in the previous match you saw a, a bit different a bit uh, differences between uh, how it started and and how we tended the, the the strategy you made. I mean, yeah, as Mimi mentioned, uh, Team Liquid kind of learned from their mistakes and uh, changed some stuff, especially seen on Lotus because, like, yeah, we played against them before and. Uh, we won it. Uh, yeah, they had a little bit uh, different approach on their also like attack sides, but uh, as everyone else in the team mentioned, uh, it was a lot of on us how we played after plans and how we didn't do what we actually practice in a moment. And yeah, I guess it was like a stressful match. Uh, Liquid also came after after just winning in the match, and and we kind of went in cold handed. I think that also has like something to play on and especially when the home crowd is cheering for them it just everything adds up little by bit little and i mean like the only regret is like that we didn't show our true game how we can play today and that's it okay now antonio summer from nergitude hi my question is for mimi what do you think you were missing to close each map and make it to the final? Um, <clears throat> I think our um, team play and individual decisions were super weak today. We did not play at our own pace and we were hesitating a lot and yeah, just making a lot of bad decisions and being very slow at reacting on information and um, Liquid took uh, advantage of that. Thank you so much. Okay, now one more question from Pedro Romero from Blix. Yes, um, I got a question for for Mimi. Glance brought up uh, an interesting point about the growth of the competition outside of you guys, given that you guys were the 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 reigning world champions. And I want to know from your perspective how much has the rest of the of the of the competitive field has grown and the competitive field I mean like the rest of the world not just like in EMEA but also like in Brazil North America APEC stuff like that how much has that grown since the end of last year's competition in which you guys became champions and and, and now at, at this moment in time um <clears throat> I think for EMEA it's Every year it's bigger. There's a lot more teams. There's definitely the biggest competition is in EMEA compared to any other region. We have so many teams. Um, for NA, I would kind of just say it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Um, APEC, I'm very, very um, pleasantly surprised about. SMG was such a, you know, f fresh air. Like they were, they were doing amazing and really no one ever, I mean, I guess, people expected them to do so well because they were going on a really good run. But like just from last year, the Asian teams was not really the strong region, honestly. And um, SMG really upped, upped the level of that. And I mean, Liquid has always been amazing. Um, and they have definitely also put in a lot of work and changed the game for themselves with, uh, with their changer uh, changer roster change and um yeah it just seems like every year it's progressing and a lot of people are coming in and out and people are just trying to make the best best rosters every year gozen has been going through a lot of stuff this year but we we made it top three and i'm very proud of that 
Ok, now last question from Sergio Fiorini of Correspondente Esportivo to Petra. Speaking of the championship in general, how do you feel after playing an entire land as a duelist? I flipping love duelist. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I really like to play duelist. Of course, the my mechanics are not that great. I don't have that much experience compared to the rest, like all the youngsters are flying in the air everywhere. And I'm a bit clumsy here and there, but uh, I really like to play. And uh, yeah, let's see if I continue the duelist. Okay, thank you and congratulations, girls. We're ended thank here. You. Bye bye.